Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Malka Asad, an international medical graduate from Syria, applying to the surgical marriage this cycle. In this channel, I talk about topics related to residency, the match process, and research. Today, I'll be talking about the six pathways that the ECFMG announced for international medical graduates to be eligible for ECFMG certification. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, IMGs needed step one, step two CK, and step two CS, in addition to graduating from their medical school, to be eligible for ECFMG certification and do residency in the United States. Following the cancellation of the USMLE Step 2 CS exam, the ECFMG announced five pathways for IMGs to be eligible for certification, but that was only for the match of 2021. Yesterday, the USMLE announced one additional pathway, so in total of six pathways for IMGs to be eligible for ECFMG certification. Before we dive into the details of each pathway, I want to point out a few points that will apply to all of these pathways. First, applicants who have already passed the USMLE Step 2 CS or have the ECFMG certification, they don't need to worry about the pathways because these pathways were intended for those who did not have USMLE Step 2 CS because it was canceled or don't have the ECFMG certification. So if you've already passed your USMLE Step 2 CS or you already have your your certification, you don't need to worry about the pathways. Second, if the applicant was certified through one of these pathways and the applicant did not enter a training program of 2021 or 2022, this certification will expire. For this certification to be permanent, the applicant has to finish one year of training into an ACGM accredited training program for this certification to be permanent. This is unlike the previous certification, for example, if you had your USMLE Step 2 CS and applied for ECFMG certification, this certification will be permanent. It will not expire. But if you got your certification through one of these pathways and did not enter a training program, the certification will expire. So one exception here, last year when the ECFMG announced the pathways, and it also said that if you did not enter the match of 2021, which is the one of this year, your certification will expire. However, an exception was announced yesterday that if you were approved for one of the pathways for the match of 2021, and you were not fortunate to match into residency to do one year of training and have the certificate as permanent, you can apply to the match of 2022. So they extended the period of the uh, expiration date for the one that you got through the match of 2021. But for now, if you got your certificate through one of the pathways and did not enter a training program of 2021, or 2022, your certification will expire. But this might change in the future. They might extend the eligibility period for this, but for now it will expire if you don't enter a training program. Third, all applicants for these pathways need an occupational English test, OET. The OET is required for all applicants regardless of their citizenship, native language, or the language of their medical school. For example, if you are a US citizen who studied abroad, an IMG, you still need the OET exam. The OED exam has an advan advantage over the CS exam because if you fail the OED exam, this does not get reported on your USMLE transcript. While if you fail the CS exam, this gets reported to the program and this is a huge disadvantage for residency applicants. And finally, you need to meet the general eligibility criteria for the ECFMG certification. For example, having your step one, your step two CK exam, you're not barred by the USMLE to take a step exam or step component from August of 2020 to January of 2022 and not barred by the SFMG for certification. One additional criteria is that you should have registered or taken a step exam or component since January of 2018. So if you have not registered or taken a step exam since January 2018, you will not be eligible for the pathways. And again, if you were approved for one of the pathways for the match of 2021 and did not match, you can use the same eligibility to apply for the match of 2022. There are six pathways and I'll go in the details of each pathway, but if you were eligible for more than one pathway, let's say you were eligible for pathway one and pathway two and path pathway three. In this situation, you apply to the first pathway you're eligible to. For example, if you're eligible for these three pathways, you apply to pathway one. If you're eligible for pathway two and three, you apply to pathway two. The only exception for that is that if you have failed the step two CS exam, one or more time, you should apply to pathway six. So if you're eligible for pathway one and two, and you have failed the USMLE step two CS exam one and more time, you should apply to pathway six, even if you're eligible for pathway one or two. 
So anyone who has failed the USMLE Step 2 CS exam previously should apply to Pathway 6, regardless of their eligibility criteria for the other pathways. So let's start with the details of the pathways. The first pathway is for those who are licensed to practice medicine in their country. For example, if you hold currently or have recently held a license or registration to practice medicine in your country or enter a postgraduate medical education, you're eligible for this pathway. The license does not have to be currently valid, but it has to be valid from January 2015 or afterwards. So if this license has expired prior to January 2015, this pathway, you're not eligible for this pathway anymore. And the license or registration should not have been subject to any disciplinary action. You can upload the documents and the certifications yourself, but it's better for the authority to send these documents by email to the ESFMG to speed up the process. Because if you send the documents yourself, that will delay the process because ECFMG now needs to authorize and make sure that these documents are valid. So it's better if you can have the authority send these documents to ECFMG directly. The second pathway is for students who have passed an objective structured clinical examination as part of obtaining a license or registration in their country. This exam must have been passed on or after January of 2018. And I'll put in the description below a list of these exams that will make you eligible for pathway two. Pathways 3, 4, and 5 are for medical students from certain schools around the world. These are certified by certain agencies that the ECFMG have approved to be eligible for certification. And I'll put in the description below links for these schools. So you can go to these links, check if your school is one of these schools. And if yes, you'll be eligible to applying through these pathways. If not, you need to check pathway 6. Again, if you're eligible for pathway one and pathway three, for example, your school is one of these schools and you are licensed to practice medicine in your country, you should apply to pathway one. And finally, pathway six is intended for those who are not eligible for pathways one to five and or have failed the USMLE step to CS exam one or more time. To be eligible for pathway six, your clinical skills have to be evaluated by a licensed physician using the ECFMG mini clinical evaluation exercise the ECFMG will release more details regarding this pathway soon. The application for pathways one to five will open in April, 2021. For pathway six, it's expected to open in July of 2021. One advice is to do this as soon as possible, as soon as the application opens, so you avoid delays in your ECFMG certification and application to the match. So in summary, those who did not pass the USMLE Step 2 CS exam need to apply for one of the six pathways to be eligible for ECFMG certification. If you are already approved for one of the pathways from the match of 2021, you don't need to apply for a new one. This will be extended and you can apply using the same uh, eligibility for the match of 2022. This certification is not permanent. You need to do one year of residency training in an ACGME accredited training program for this certification to be permanent. All applicants need an OET exam. The first pathway is for those who are licensed to practice medicine in their country. Second pathway is for those who take an OSCE exam as part of their license. Third, fourth, and fifth is for students from certain schools. And the sixth pathway will involve evaluation of your clinical skills. I hope you found the information in this video useful and I wish you best luck in your residency journey and ECFMG certification. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad or my Facebook page, Malka Asad MD. If you found any value in this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future videos related to the match, residency, or research. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos.